Welcome to the Flight Bridge Ed podcast series. Hey everybody, uh, this is Eric back with you with Flight Bridge Ed. Well, I apologize for the hiatus. We've uh, we've actually had a lapse of about three weeks between podcasts, and I apologize. I've just been uh, terribly busy with my primary uh, job, and then uh, I've traveled to three review courses in the last month. So I want to thank everybody that uh, joined us in Alabama, in Dallas, Texas, and in Abilene, Texas. So those are the three locations we've just recently visited. Um, we learned a lot, and we uh, hope you enjoyed our course. Um, today's podcast, what we're going to go over is we're going to go over a little bit about gas laws. Specifically, we'll go over five different gas laws as it relates to what we do flight-wise. I think it's important to understand um, um, a few of those really well, to, uh, and that'll lead us into our podcast uh, for next time where we're going to look into oxygenation versus ventilation. I know that there's a lot of people out there that struggle with manipulating the ventilator as it relates to oxygenation versus ventilation. And um, so I think we're going to go into that. So we'll start today and we'll go into some flight physiology uh, gas laws in specific and uh, we'll go from there. So the different gas laws that we constantly think about relating to flight physiology are Boyle's law. We know Boyle's law is related to pressure. We'll get into more in depth on that here in a second. Then we got Charles law, which is temperature. We're going to skip uh, gay loose x law because I really don't feel like it's necessary with regards to this lecture. Then we're going to really dive deep into Dalton's law, Henry's law, and Graham's law, which um, I feel like Henry's law is the most important gas law that we should understand to manipulate oxygenation. So the first one we're going to go over is Boyle's law. Remember, Boyle's law is relating to barometric pressure and uh, volume. And so what that means is if, if you imagine us sitting at sea level and the barometric pressure is uh, 760 millimeters of mercury, or atmospheric pressure, I should say, is 760 millimeters of mercury at sea level, as we increase in altitude, all right, so imagine a pressure is exerted against a balloon at sea level. So you have a lot of pressure. As you increase in al altitude, that pressure actually decreases. We decrease in pressure as we increase in altitude. So that same amount of pressure that's exerted against that balloon is actually released, which allows for more volume to occupy that balloon space. So as we increase in altitude, that balloon becomes bigger because the barometric pressure that's exerted against that balloon is decreased. So how does that relate to us flying? Well, we know that as we increase in altitude, we can have changes in our inner ear, we can have changes in our sinus, we can have changes um, just based on nitrogen washout. Um, we, we always think about that as far as decompression sickness, but you can also have that in the obese population. Um, they, they, they store a lot of uh, nitrogen in their lipids, and then they can have nitrogen release into the joints and, and things like that that's similar to decompression sickness. Um, we can have uh, problems with our teeth um, and so on. So um, we also can see problems with hollow organs. Now, if you're flying a rotor, um, we uh, routinely don't go in altitude uh, to uh, levels that really would affect us boil, boil us law wise. You know, that's more, I think, related to fixed wing flight. And, uh, but I think it's important to understand if, if you're preparing for uh, your advanced certification exams, whether it's FPC or CFRN, where there's a lot of flight physiology uh, involved, then I think it's really important to understand these gas laws at a high level. So Boyle's Law, remember, we're going to recap it again. As you increase in altitude, that barometric pressure that's exerted against a balloon, and I'm using it as a balloon as an analogy because I think it's easy to understand, that pressure against that balloon is decreased, and that allows that balloon to expand, it, and there's more volume that can occupy that space. All right, so that is Boyle's Law. When we talk about the next law that relates to flight physiology, we're, we, we think about temperature, and that's Charles' Law. Charles' Law states that the pressure is constant at all times, and if you have an increase in temperature, you're going to have an increase in volume, and vice versa. If you have a decrease in temperature, you're going to have a decrease in volume. So the big thing to remember with Charles' Law is that this is completely in contrast to Boyle's Law. They're constantly competing with each other. So what does that mean? 
Well, remember in Boyle's Law, as we increase in altitude, our barometric pressure decreases. That, that allows more volume to occupy that space. Well, in Charles' Law, if we increase in altitude, for every 1,000 feet we increase in altitude, we drop our temperature by 2 degrees Celsius. So if we're increasing in altitude and our temperature is decreasing, and I said before, the pressure stays constant, if the temperature decreases, our volume decreases. All right, so in Boyle's Law, as you increase in altitude, that volume increases, and as you increase in altitude with Charles' Law, your volume actually decreases because the temperature decreases. So they're constantly counterbalancing each other. All right, so let's recap that again. As your temperature decreases, as the altitude increases, your volume actually decreases. So that same balloon that we talked about with Boyle's Law as we were increasing in altitude and that barometric pressure is decreasing and that volume in that enclosed space is increasing, you're getting colder as you go up in that altitude and that temperature is uh, causing that volume to actually decrease. So again, it's counterbalancing each other. All right, we're going to keep going. The next gas law that we're going to talk about is Dalton's Law. Dalton's Law, think about as Dalton's gang. And basically what we're talking about is we're talking about everything that makes up atmospheric air. And, and we know that atmospheric air is made up of oxygen at 21%, nitrogen at 78%. It's made up of argon and hydrogen and, and things like that. What Dalton's Law says is as we increase in altitude, because that barometric pressure that we just talked about in Boyle's Law decreases, the partial pressure of oxygen that's available to use is actually decreased. So if you imagine if you had a plastic bag and you threw all these oxygen molecules in that plastic bag and we were at sea level, you would have all these oxygen molecules really close together and they would be occupying this space um, very tightly. As you increased in altitude, those oxygen molecules, because the barometric pressure is not exerting all that pressure to squeeze it together, those oxygen molecules are farther apart. And so you're not, you're not able to use those O2 molecules. Our O2 percentage is still 21%, but as we increase in altitude, the barometric pressure that's exerted against those O2 molecules is, is decreased, and so we can't utilize the, that O2 as effectively. So this is how it kind of works. If it, at, at sea level, at 760 millimeters of mercury, if you remember from my podcast early on on cellular respiration, I talked about at 760 millimeters of mercury, as we inhale 21% oxygen, that oxygen, you multiply 21% times 760, and that gives you a partial pressure of oxygen. And we said that that equals to about 159 millimeters of mercury. As we bring that O2 molecule in our mouth, because of the humidification process, that dilutes that O2 molecule down to 104 uh, PO2, essentially. So as it travels down our bronchioles and it reaches our alveolar membrane, we are at a higher concentration. We're at 104 millimeters of mercury of PO2, or PaO2, I should say. And that is Dalton's law as it affects us at sea level. All right, so let's look at if that same person went up to 20,000 feet elevation. That, that person would be um, at a barometric pressure of, of about 350 millimeters of mercury. If you multiply that barometric pressure of 350 times our percentage of oxygen of 0.21, that gives you a alveolar oxygen concentration or a partial pressure of oxygen of 40. All right, so we at sea level started at 159, and just by increasing in altitude to 20,000 feet, we've dropped our PO2, our available, our partial pressure of oxygen down to 40. So that is what Dalton's Law means. As you increase in altitude, that barometric pressure decreases. We, we're not pushing those O2 molecules together, so now they're farther apart. We can't utilize those effectively, and we become hypoxic. So that's very important to understand as it relates to flying at altitude. Obviously, in a rotor flight, we don't fly at altitudes um, very often above 5,000 feet. You know, I know we can go up to maybe nine to 10,000, but after that, you know, helicopters just don't fly at that, that altitude. When we talk about fixed wing flight, it's very important to understand that. It's, it's important to always understand your altitudes or your barometric pressure, where you leave from and where you're going to. And it's important to know what your cabin pressure is at all times because it really does affect 
your patients, especially if they're head injury patients or they're hypoxic, they're, they're ARDS, they're on the vent, things like that. It's important to understand this gas law. All right. The most important gas law that we can talk about is Henry's Law. For the longest time, when Henry's Law was taught to me, it was taught in a way of decompression sickness. And I really never understood why it was taught that way because we truly don't have very many patients that have decompression sickness. And then after working in the field for a couple years flying, I heard another way of explaining it that stuck with me. And so I'm going to explain it in that way. Henry's Law states that the amount of gas dissolved in a solution is directly proportional to the pressure above a gas over a solution. So imagine a, a Coke, and if you that Coke is unopened, you have all this pressure that's above the solution, right? You have carbon dioxide in the can, all right? And as you open that, open that Coke up, we release all that pressure, and that carbon dioxide that was in the can is now trying to equalize out in the atmospheric air, all right? So that's kind of the analogy of what that is. But how do, we, how do we make this make sense with our patient care? If we look at Henry's Law and we apply it to oxygenation physiology, it's very simple. There's three different things that Henry's Law affects. The first thing we have to do to affect Henry's Law as it relates to oxygenation is, is we have to increase the amount of O2 that's available. So we have to increase the concentration. So imagine... If I had a cup, and I had a cup full of blood, and we, we put 21% of oxygen molecules, so the amount of oxygen molecules that was actually in 21% oxygen, and we put that in the blood. And so we have all these O2 molecules floating around. All right, so that's a normal, um, let's say, capillary bed. And so how are we going to affect change with this patient and use Henry's Law to our advantage? Well, the first rule is we have to increase the concentration. So let's increase it to 100%. And we do this in our RSI. That's exactly what we're doing. We're increasing the concentration in RSI. We're trying to cause nitrogen washout. We're trying to improve our PO2, our partial pressure of oxygen, as high as possible to buy us some time while we perform that procedure. All right, so the first thing we're going to do again is we're going to increase the concentration. We started at 21%, right, room air, and we're going to increase it to 100% FiO2. So 100% via non-rebreather or via bag valve mask ventilations, however you want to use it, we're increasing that concentration. The second thing we want to do is we want to put it under pressure, all right? So if you think about the, the can of, of soda and it's under pressure, we're going to do the same thing. So how can we put something under pressure and utilize Henry's Law? Well, if we use positive pressure ventilation or we use good ventilator strategies, so any any um, means that's going to cause pressure to push those O2 molecules down through the blood. All right. So we've increased the oxygenation and now we've increased positive pressure. So we put pressure on it. So imagine that cup of blood, we've filled it with more O2 molecules. So we've increased the concentration and now we're pushing pressure over the top of it. So however you want to think about that, whether you're putting a vacuum cleaner, and we're, we're switching the pressure to where we're pushing it down. However, we're doing it. Positive pressure ventilation that we learn to do with a, CO, with a, a CHF patient, right? They've got pulmonary edema. We're pushing that fluid back in. So that's what we're doing. We're positive pressure. And the third thing we're going to do is we're going to increase the surface area. So if we had a cup of blood, and let's say it's 8 ounces, and, we, and we've got it filled with all those O2 molecules, and we've got it under pressure, and now we dump that blood in a bigger pot. Now that same amount of blood that was maybe 4 inches deep is now only a half inch deep. So we have more surface area for O2 molecules to diffuse into our capillary beds, into our, um, through our alveolar membrane, and, and etc. All right? So again... First thing, we're going to increase the concentration. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply positive pressure. And the third thing we're going to do is we're going to um, make the surface area bigger. All right, so how do we make the surface area bigger? Well, when it relates to critical care medicine, I'm talking about ventilator management strategies. I'm not talking about anything else because that's really the biggest way we can do that. Remember in our ventilator management strategies, we talked about our inspiratory maneuvers, how we deliver a breath via the tidal volume, whether it's volume or pressure, how quickly we deliver that breath, that's what determines alveolar recruitment. 
That's what improves functional residual capacity, all right? To maintain that recruitment, to maintain those ser that service area, we apply PEEP, all right? So that's what we need to do with this patient. We've increased the concentration. We've then um, applied pressure, and now we're applying PEEP to improve our surface area, all right? So that is the best definition of Henry's Law, and that's why it's so important to um, understand Henry's Law to this depth because it truly affects everything we do with oxygenation with our patients. And you've heard in my podcast before, I'm very passionate about oxygenation. I find it extremely fascinating how aerobic and anaerobic metabolism works and how cellular function works and all that stuff. And, and maybe I'm a nerd when it comes to that stuff, but I just find it so fascinating. So we always come back to when we're treating our patients, nine times out of 10, if we correct the oxygenation problem, we understand how that works we're going to fix other problems. You're going to improve cellular function. You're going to slow anaerobic metabolism. You're going to improve cardiac output. You're going to optimize the FIC, FIC formula as, as it relates to uptake of oxygen. And um, you're going to have a better patient outcome because of that. All right? The next gas law that we're going to talk about is Graham's law. All right? And this is going to be the last gas law we're going to talk about. And this gas law is actually very simple. Graham's law is essentially the law of diffusion. So we just talked about Henry's law, and we talked about you know improving the concentration and, and improving the pressure and improving the surface area. And you have to have all those things to have diffusion, right? Diffusion will happen to a point. In a normal uh, patient that's not sick, that's very easy. It happens very easily. It's very passive, right? But we're not talking about normal patients. We're talking about patients that have a ventilation, cardiac output um, mismatch. We're talking about patients that have massive shunt. So that's why we have to effectively utilize these gas laws, Henry's law in particular, to um, alter oxygen diffusion. So Graham's law basically states we're going from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Um, very simple concept. We learned this in, in seventh grade biology class. So if we go back to our earlier podcast, we, we discussed this in length, and I'll hit it really quickly. That, that oxygen molecule we just talked about where the um, PO2 of 104 that started because of we multiplied our barometric pressure at sea level of 760 times 0.21. That gives you a PO2 starting out of 159. As we bring that oxygen molecule in, um, because of humidification, that dissolves or d dilutes, I should say, that, that down to 104. So that's your higher concentration. As our blood is returning from our heart and it's passing by the lungs to be, to be oxygenated, so our hemoglobin have hydrogen hooked to it, they have CO2 hooked to it, they're looking for O2 molecules. O2 molecules need to jump on, and CO2 and deoxygenated blood um, needs to be oxygenated. So at that level, as it's passing from the heart, deoxygenated, we're at a PO2 of about 40 millimeters of mercury. So we're coming in at about 104, we're uh, at the low end, we're, we're 40, and that's going to go from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. So that's effectively Graham's law, and that's how it affects oxygenation. Again, you can't do any of that if you don't effectively utilize Henry's law and, and fix those three things we talked about. So that's all I have for this podcast. I, I really wanted to talk about these gas laws. I think they're, they're tremendously important for what we do. Um, specifically, really study Henry's Law, understand what it does, understand if you're flying fixed wing, how to manipulate and how to understand Dalton's Law and how partial pressure of oxygen um, decreases as you increase in altitude and you don't have the ability to utilize those o that O2 effectively. Um, look for our podcast coming up. We're going to do a podcast on oxygenation versus ventilation. I'm going to do a podcast on uh, central venous uh, uh, pressures, um, so f CVP lines. Uh, I think we can learn a lot about that, and we're going to do a podcast on pressure-regulated volume control ventilation, a new mode of ventilation that a lot of the country is seeing in the Revell ventilator. So, uh, again, I want to thank you all for joining us uh, for our podcast, joining us in our review classes. We really appreciate it. We've gotten to meet some great people, and we will talk to you soon. Thank you. We want to thank you. Flight Bridget.